Okay, so we are on chapter, uh, or excuse me, chapter one, uh, page, uh, we're going to start on page 13. I'm going to read this again. Uh, so the, the chapter, first chapter is called, Can We Handle the Truth? Uh, the main idea is that truth is absolute, exclusive, and knowable. To deny it, you must affirm it is true. And then there are some terms there that we'll go over as we uh, go through this. And then remember that the whole book is a logical argument. And the first two points of that logical argument are truth about reality is knowable. Now, you can say that, but what proof do we have of that? So that's what we're going to talk about. The opposite of true is false. Uh, and so... Uh, in the first couple of chapters, we'll be walking through those two statements and determining if they are true or not. So, the emboldened questions, we're, gonna, we're going to discuss the first three questions. So, uh, I want to hear from you on these. Uh, so, the first question is, define truth in your own words. How would you define the word true? What is true? Yes. Something that is right in the eyes of God. Something that's right in the eyes of God. What else? Yes. Something you can prove. Something you can prove. Oh. No? Correct. Something that's correct. I think the book says that it's a. Uh, not a statement, but I'm going to use that because I can't think of the first word that corresponds to its object. Um, here's what here's what I wrote uh, down: an idea, statement, or belief that is true for all people at all times and in all places. An idea or a statement, uh, idea, statement, or belief that is true for all people. Now, the concept of truth and the concept of absolute truth, that something can be absolutely true, is not popular in our culture. And we'll dive into that um, as we walk through this. So the next question is, in what areas of life do you demand truth? In other words, who do you want, what people or what groups of people do you want to tell you the truth? Yeah, your friends. Your friends. And family, yeah, you want your friends and your family to be truthful, right? Yes, pastors. Your pastors, your religious leaders. You want them to tell you the truth. Yeah. Significant others. Significant others. Husbands, wives, girlfriends, boyfriends. Who else? Your teachers want truth from you as well? Absolutely. What about the media? Do you want the media to tell us the truth? Yeah, listen, I will, and this is this is going off track a little bit, but I, but, I, but I believe this, that we now are in a place where there is so much disinformation available. And there are people around the world whose job it is to float false narratives, to get people to believe it, and to tweet it out, and to you know put it on Facebook, and and we are close to becoming um, a culture and a world that can't can't discern truth from fiction. That's and I think it's one of the biggest issues of our time. We can't even know what's true and what's not true. I received a text from a dear friend, uh, it's, and it was a group text, a bunch of women that we were all in box together many years ago. And it was this seemingly, uh, this, te this text that had been sent out by a very famous pastor um, saying uh, that there were imminent um, uh, death threats for Christians in Afghanistan. Look, Things aren't going well in Afghanistan, and it, it's not going to be good for Christians. But that particular email was never sent by the pastor. Someone sent it as though it was that pastor, but it wasn't. It, it, was, it was false. 
and it was to get people all riled up about something that wasn't true. We've got to be careful. We can't just believe, we can't just click share, 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 vet your sources. Um, it's, a, it's a big problem in our, in our society. So why is truth, uh, why is truth so important in life? So we know what's real or not. Yeah, we need to know what's real. Real. Why do we need to know what's real? Yeah. How we know to be so we know to be wise. Why else do we need to know what's real? Have like positive outcomes. Um, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. Better understand. Yeah. Any of you want to base your life on a lie? You want to know what's true and what's not. We'll be basing our life on a lie. Let me ask you this: When uh, and, and I don't want any names or anything, but I assume that most of you have had uh, a friend, a family member, someone close to you not tell you the truth. Lie to you. What happens in your relationship with that person when you realize they've lied to you? What, what goes in? What? Your trust. Now you know I can't trust that person. Without truth, trust dies. Without truth, trust dies. You cannot have a trusting relationship with that person. And so we need to know what's true in order to know what our lives should be based on. And that is what this year is called. Can we really, truly believe that Jesus is the Christ? Can we really, truly believe in the Bible? What evidence do we have? Um, so uh, we'll, we'll leave that fourth question for later. Uh, and then turn in your big atheist book chapter one. Which is um, 39. Well, let's start on 33. You see the, um, the chapters 1 and 2 will cover the first two points. The truth about reality is noble, and the opposite of the truth is false. You have a, we'll have a quiz after the first chapter. You will have a test after chapters 1 and 2. Uh, so uh, I'm going to begin on page uh, 35, and I'm going to read for a little bit, then I'm going to give you some time to read. Please note on the board that if, if you don't get through the reading in this class period, you need to finish it for homework. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm going to assume you have read it before tomorrow, because what, we're, what you're doing tomorrow will be based on this reading. Okay, yes? Can you post that... Uh... Of what recording? The one where you read, you said you read the whole book out loud. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't sent that. I sent that out to you. Thank you. I always have to have help doing it because I forget from each year to this. I only do it once a year, and so it's like. But yes, you're right. Uh, I don't have a. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, yes, you do. Have you, you got, have you gotten the paper that I told you to get out of the box? It's all. Okay, you, you definitely have to. Okay, can we handle the truth? Ben Stumble is Winston Churchill, the former um, Prime, Minister, Prime Minister of England. Good job. Uh, during World War II and after. Uh, men stumble over the truth time, from time to time, but most pick themselves up and hurry off as if nothing happened. They had a great wit. In the movie A Few Good Men, Tom Cruise plays a Navy lawyer who questions a Marine colonel played by Jack Nicholson about the murder of one of Nicholson's men. 
The dramatic courtroom scene turns into a shouting match as Cruz accuses Nicholson of being complicit, <coughs> being a part of, <coughs> bless you, being a part of that murder. That was entertaining. <laughs> Cruz says, Colonel, did you order the code red? The judge says, you don't have to answer that question. Nicholson says, I'll answer the question. You want answers? Cruz said, I think I'm entitled to them. Nicholson, you want answers? Cruz said, I want the truth. And Nicholson answered, you can't handle the truth. One of the most famous movie lines ever. Nicholson might as well have been yelling at all of America rather than Cruz because it seems that many in our country can't handle the truth. On one hand, we demand truth in virtually every area of our lives. For example, we demand truth from loved ones. No one wants to be lied, wants lies from a spouse or a child or a Cousin. Doctors, we want the right medicine prescribed and the right operations performed. Stockbrokers, we demand that they tell us the truth about companies they recommend. Courts, we want them to convict only the truly guilty. Employers, we want them to tell us the truth and pay us fairly. Airlines, we demand truly safe planes and truly sober pilots. We also expect to, to be told the truth when we pick up a reference book, read an article, or watch a news story. We want the truth from advertisers, teachers, and politicians. We assume road signs, medicine bottles, and food labels reveal the truth. In fact, we demand the truth for almost every facet of life uh, that affects our money, relationships, safety, or health. On the other hand, despite our unwavering demands for truth in those areas, many of us say we aren't interested in truth when it comes to morality or religion. In fact, many uh, many downright reject the idea that any religion can be true. As we're sure you've noticed, there's a huge contradiction here. Why do we demand truth in everything but morality and religion? Why do we say, that's true for you, but it's not, not for me, when we're talking about morality or religion, but we never even think of such nonsense when we're talking to a stockbroker about our money or a doctor about our health? Although few would admit it, our rejection of religious and moral truth is often on volitional, by our own free will, rather than in intellect on intellectual grounds. We just don't want to be held accountable to any moral standards or religious doctrine. So we blindly accept the self-defeating, we'll explain what that means later, truth claims of, pol of politically correct intellectuals who tell us that the truth does not, that truth does not exist. Everything is relative. Uh, everything is different for uh, each person. There are no absolutes. It's all a matter of opinions. You ought not judge. Religion is about faith, not facts. Perhaps Augustine was right when he said that we love the truth when it enlightens us, but we hate it when it convicts us. Maybe we can't handle the truth. In order to resolve our cultural schizophrenia, which actually we need to address four questions concerning the truth. First, what is truth? Two, can truth be known? Three, truth, uh, can truths about God be known? Four, so what? Who cares about truth? We'll cover these questions in this chapter and the next. What is truth? The truth about truth. What is truth? Very simply, truth is telling it like it is. When the Roman governor Pilate asked Jesus what is truth nearly 2,000 years ago, he didn't wait for Jesus to respond. Instead, Pilate immediately acted as if he knew at least some truth concerning Jesus. He declared, I find no fault in this man. By exonerating, by declaring Jesus not guilty, Jesus, uh, exonerating Jesus, Pilate was telling it like it is. Truth can be also be defined as that which corresponds to its object, or that which describes an actual state of affairs. Pilate's judgment was true because it matched its object. It described an accurate state of affairs. Jesus really was innocent. Contrary to what is being taught in many public schools, truth is not relative, but absolute. If something is true, it is true for all people, at all times, in all places. All truth claims are absolute, narrow, and exclusive. Just think about the claim, everything is true. That's an absolute, narrow, and exclusive claim. 
it excludes its opposite. In other words, it claims that the statement, uh, everything is not true, is wrong. In fact, all truths exclude their opposites, even religious truths. This became comically clear when a number of years ago, I, Norm, debated religious humanist uh, Michael Constantine Kalenda. Of, of the many atheists I debated, he was one of the few who actually read my book, Christian Apologetics, prior to the debate. When it was his turn to speak, Kalenda took my, up my book and declared, these Christians are very narrow-minded people. I read Dr. Geisler's book. Do you know what he believes? He believes that Christianity is true and everything opposed to it is false. These Christians are very narrow-minded people. Well, Kalenda had also written a book, which I had read before. It was titled Religion Without God, which is sort of like Romance Without Spouse. When it was my turn to speak, I held up Kalenda's book and declared, these humanists are very narrow-minded people. I read Dr. Kalenda's book. Do you know what he believes? He believes that humanism is true and everything opposed to it is false. These humanists are very narrow-minded people. The audience chuckled because they could see the point. Humanist truth claims are just as narrow as Christian truth claims. For if, if H, humanism, is true, then anything opposed to H is false. Likewise, if C, Christianity, is true, then anything opposed to C is false. There are many other truths about truth. Here are some of them. Truth is discovered, not invented. It exists independent of anyone's knowledge of it. Gravity existed prior to Newton. Truth is transcultural. If something is true, it is true for all people in all places at all times. Two plus two equals four everywhere, for everyone, everywhere, at every time. Truth is unchanging even when our beliefs about truth change. When we began to believe the earth was round instead of flat, the truth about the earth didn't change. Only our belief about the earth. Beliefs cannot change fact, no matter how sincerely they are held. Someone can sincerely believe the world is flat, but that only makes that person sincerely mistaken. Truth is not affected by the attitude of the one professing it. An arrogant person does not make the truth he professes false. A humble person does not make the error he professes true. All truths are absolute truths. Even truths that appear to be relative really uh, absolute. For example, I, Frank Turek, feel warm on November 20th, 2003, may appear to be a relative truth, but it is actually absolutely true for everyone everywhere that Frank Turek had a sensation of warmth on that day. In short, contrary beliefs are possible, but contrary truths are not possible. Do you hear that? Contrary beliefs are possible, but contrary truths are not possible. We can believe everything is true, but we cannot make everything true. This seems obvious enough, but how do we deal with the modern assertion that there is no truth? A couple of cartoon characters can help us. The word architect. If someone said to you, I have one uh, insight for you that absolutely will revolutionize your ability to quickly and clearly identify false statements and false philosophies that permeate our culture, would you be interested? That's what we're about to do here. In fact, if we had to pick just one thinking ability as the most valuable we've learned in our many years of seminary and postgraduate education, it would be this. How to identify and re refuse against self-defeating statements. You'll, you'll find out what a self-defeating statement is. An incident from a recent rate talk radio program will demonstrate what we mean by self-defeating statements. The program's host, Jerry, was taking calls on the subject of morality. After hearing numerous callers boldly claim that a certain moral position was true, one caller blurted out, Jerry, Jerry, there's no such thing as truth. I, Frank, scrambled for the phone and began to dial furiously. Busy, busy, busy. I wanted to get on and say, Jerry, to the guy who said there is no such thing as truth, is that true? I never did get through, and Jerry, of course, agreed with the caller, never realizing that his claim could not possibly be true because it was self-defeating. A self-defeating statement is one that fails to meet its own standard. As we're sure you realize, the caller's statement, there is no truth, there is no truth claims to be true and thus defeats itself. You understand what, what, I'm, what we're saying here? 
that if you say there is no such thing as absolute truth, you are stating that as an absolute truth. Therefore, there is absolute truth. Like they're, they're proving that there's such a thing as absolute truth by stating there is no such thing as absolute truth as an absolute truth. Does that make sense? And even if that were the only absolute truth, that's still, you would have to know every absolute truth claim in the universe to know that that's the only one. Um, so that's what we mean by self-defeating. It, 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 it contradicts itself. It's like saying, I can't speak a word of English. If someone ever said that, you obviously would respond, wait a minute, your statement must be false because you just uttered it in English. Self-defeating statements are made routinely in our postmodern culture. And once you sharpen your ability to detect them, you'll become an absolutely fearless defender of truth. No doubt you've heard people say things like, all truth is relative, and there, is no, there are no absolutes. Now you'll be armed to refute such silly statements by simply revealing that they don't meet up to their own uh, meet their own criteria. In other words, by turning a self-defeating statement on itself, you can expose it for the nonsense it is. We call this process of turning a self-defeating statement on itself the roadrunner tactic because it reminds us of the cartoon characters Roadrunner in a wild, wild e like coyote. As you may remember from Saturday morning cartoons, the coyote's one and only quest was to chase down the speedy roadrunner and make him his evening meal. But the roadrunner is simply too fast and too smart. Just when the coyote is gaining ground, the roadrunner stops short at the cliff's edge, leaving the passing coyote momentarily suspended in midair, supported by nothing. As soon as the coyote realizes he has no ground to stand on, he plummets to the valley floor and crashes. Well, that's exactly what the roadrunner tactic, tactic can do to the relativists and the postmodernists of our day. It helps them realize that their arguments cannot sustain their own weight. Consequently, they crash to the ground in a heap. This makes you look like a super genius. Let's take the ro roadrunner tactic to college to show you what we mean. The roadrunner tactic is especially needed in today's college colleges, today's college students. Why? Because if you listen to many university professors, they'll tell you that there is no truth. What amazes us is that parents all over the world are literally paying thousands of dollars in college tuition so that their sons and daughters can be taught the truth, that there is no truth. Not to mention other self-defeating postmodern assertions such as all truth is relative. Is that a relative truth? There is no. There are no absolutes. Are you absolutely sure? And it's true for you, but not for me. Is that statement just true for you, or is that is it true for everyone? True for you, but not for me, may be the mantra of our day, but it's how it's not how the world really works. Try saying that to your bank teller or police or the, or the police or the IRS and see how far you go. Well, it may be true for you that I was speeding, sir, but for, well, it isn't true for me. Of course, the modern mantras are false because they are self-defeating. But for those who still blindly believe them, we have a few questions. If there really is no truth, then why try to learn anything? Why should you, any student listen to any professor? After all, the professor doesn't have the truth. What's the point of going to school, much less paying for it? And what's the point of obeying the professor's moral prohibition against cheating on tests, plagiarizing on term papers? Ideas have consequences. Good ideas have good consequences, and bad ideas have bad consequences. Indeed, many students realize the implications of the bad postmodern ideas and behave accordingly. If we teach students that there is no right and poor wrong, and wrong, why are we surprised when a couple of students gun down their classmates or a teenage mother lose her baby in a trash can? Why should they act right when uh, we teach them that there is no such thing as right? C.S. Lewis revealed the okay, finish reading this page, page 44, we're going to stop at Can All Religions Be True? Stop at page 44, Can All Religions Be True? Oh, it's good. 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 Oh,
using it. Um, do you need to do the first one? Uh, the next question is called to do it. Sorry, got to turn it off.